20 rounds, a feat achieved by very few men over a period of 25 years. The first tonight, $100,000, winner take all. Both men working on the inside. Two good middleweights punching toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Walker to become one of the greatest welterweights and middleweights in the history of the division. A right drops Milligan. Walker rushes in to follow through. He has great boxing ability. The punching strength of a heavyweight, the speed of a lightweight. That combination makes him one of the most formidable fighters of all time. Now watch a left-right combination by Walker. Drop Milligan again. And it's all over. Another amazing victory for Mickey Walker. The runner-up to the best of the middleweights, Carlos Monzon. Here in round six, Monzon in dark trunks has built up a slight lead in the scoring. Challenger Jose Napoles in red is trying to fend off the heart-punching middleweight title holder. Middleweight champion Monzon is exactly six foot tall, which gives him an enormous reach advantage over the five foot seven inch Jose Napoli. Monzon is known as a deadly right hand puncher, while welterweight champion Jose Napoli is considered a master boxer puncher. Throwing bombs in there. Napoli's is hurt. It's all Monzon here in round six. Can Napoli's last the round out? Jose Napoles cannot answer the bell for the seventh round. In this battle of champions, Carlos Monzon retains the middleweight championship of the world with a seventh round knockout over Jose Napoles. And look at those years. The winner going away for the best middleweight of all time, Sugar Ray Robinson.
Bill, they say that the cliché pound for pound was invented or named after Sugar Ray Robinson. Is that true? Do you know about that? Yeah, I think it was. I think they started using that cliché when Robinson came around. I think Duran owns that distinction now. Mm -hmm. But the, the, when you say pound for pound, immediately you think of Sugar Ray Robinson. Is that right, Larry? Do you remember? I think so. And, uh... And then, of course, when he was coming up, everybody considered Joe Lewis was the greatest name in boxing, the greatest attraction. And you had to give something to Sugar Ray Robinson because he was such a great athlete. But I think in that fight against, uh, the second fight that he fought against Randy Turpin, you saw what all of these champions are made out of, the great spirit uh, that they have, the, the, that fieriness when they need it, because uh, he was about to lose for a second time to Turpin with a cut eye, and he came on as few seldom saw him when he just had to go and knock out a fighter because he was not a man who felt that he had to knock out every fighter. He didn't. He took a knockout if it came. Greatest champ or the greatest division champ of all time. How do you grade a fighter? Well, of course, there's uh, boxing ability, the ability to take a punch, the uh, ability to throw a punch, to land a punch, his, his punching power, and this guy had all of that. He had, uh, putting it all together, he, he was perfection in all those areas. And he's certainly going to figure later on in this show a strong challenger. We'll see how it comes out in the poll as the best fighter of all time. He was the closest to the perfect fighter. You think there'll ever be another one like him? Oh, well, there's always somebody else, but uh, I don't see any in the horizon that has all that, except maybe Durant. But Durant didn't, doesn't box the way this fellow did. I was a little surprised that Carlos Manzong was rated second. He was an outstanding fighter, that great height, six feet tall for a middleweight, could stand outside most middleweights and punch them with his best punch from a distance. But I think there are people who would dispute the fact that he was the second best and better than somebody like Mickey Walker. All right, let's go up in poundage again. And we're now going to move in and take a look at some of the very best men who ever fought in the light heavyweight division. I think one of the fascinations of this series to me has been some of the rare and precious film we've shown you. Now, in the light heavyweight division, the man voted the third best of all time, Bob Fitzsimmons. And you're going to see a film of the first championship fight on film ever made in America. 1897, Fitzsimmons against gentleman Jim Corbett. Corbett with his back to the camera is still ahead on points and Fitzsimmons knows he's bleeding badly. But amazingly, the challenger is starting to press the fight. Corbett has been boxing well, keeping Fitzsimmons off, but Bob Fitzsimmons is definitely coming on. At this point, the all-nitrate film starts to disintegrate, but a somewhat viewable version of the 14th round knockout was assembled from potato chip-like fragments. Watch Fitzsimmons on the right step on the Corbett's left jab and land his own hard left to the champion's midsection. Gentlemen, Jim collapses. Corbett has evidently had the wind knocked out of him. He's still down when the referee completes the 10 count. And Fitzsimmons raises his hand in triumph. In slow motion, let's see that again. Here comes the left hook that Fitzsimmons on the right later called his solo plexus punch. The champion goes down to his knee. He tries to crawl over to the corner of the ring to pull himself up by using the ring ropes. Meanwhile, Fitzsimmons stalks around, keeping a close watch on his progress. The referee and timekeeper, Masterson, seems out of sequence, but it is obvious that Corbett will not beat the count. Gentleman Jim has lost his heavyweight crown. 